Hello folks, today I'm going to be taking a look at a monstrosity from MV Creatives. It's their Megazork. Alright folks, so this is the Goblin Megazork um, from MV Creative. Uh, so, first off, it's all resin. That is a heck of a base. It's a 80 mil base, textured and with plug-in points for the various pieces, of which, as you can see, there are many, ranging from very big to very small. So let's have a look at the main body. Oh, that moves. Ah, okay. So the main body that has this clockwork affair with all the gearing in there is actually separate. And that fits perfectly inside that. That is a beautiful fit. Mm. There we have our crew compartment, which I think can be put closed as well as open. Um, we have smokestacks on the back. And large forearms. There are some sprue gates on here that have been clipped down and need to be removed. Um, they've actually done a bit of clean up on this before shipping from the looks of things. So it's like clean up on the mold line there. I will finish that off myself, mind you. Um, more pronounced on the inside, but when it's assembled, I don't know if that's visible. We shall see. It has a very Warcraft feel, big chunky round construction with huge rivets on it and a lot of gratings. Um, setting the body aside for a moment. We have, what have we got? Oh, feet. I think it's a foot. I think I've got the foot back to front. There we go. So we have another foot as well then going in. Again, lovely cast. Absolutely beautiful casting. We'll need the sprue gate on the bottom of the peg clipped down to get it to sit flush. But that is what you'd expect. We have various pipes and pistons and joints. That looks like that must be the arm. Okay, no instructions with this. There is a big picture um, on their uh, website. There's a grill. Again, sprue gate will need to be cleaned there. It's interesting. It looks like that should have a um, hinge. I wonder if it's in amongst these smaller bags. Hmm. And those, I think, are fingers. I have to say, from what I can see, the um, the quality of the, the resin is superb. Cleanup should be very quick. Um, just removing the remnants of sprue gates, really. There doesn't seem to be any major mold lines. Doesn't seem to be any mold lines at all. Oh, there's one. Okay. Rather than go through this bit by bit, um, which I could do, but I'll save you, I'll go to a, and uh, wash it up and assemble it. And I should be back with it all built in a moment. All right, I'm back and the Megazork is built, mostly. Um, so the reason it's not 100% built is because when I paint it, I want to be able to get into some of these. So things like our gearing isn't glued in yet. Neither is the uh, grill plate on the front or indeed covering these cogs on the rear. There's another little plate there. What I will say is I, I did mention in 
the uh, the start of the unboxing when I was looking through that it looked like there should be hinges here, and indeed there are. There's this little set of hinges, two for the front and two for that rear grill plate that will just butt on there to actually make it look like a hinged door. So it's got that going for it, which is nice. Uh, my pilot is also sitting here separately. He will just go into the middle. And then this front grill piece with the tusks will go on there and sit down protecting them. Uh, it's an absolutely gorgeous model. It's so Warcraftian in its sort of concept and design that I love. Again, with this um, pilot, I just pop him out. His arms are still separate because they, uh, they cover a lot of his body. Now, I know his body won't be seen, but you can see there how they just sit in forming the base and allowing them to sort of go forward and back like a, a JCB driver. I love that. Or I suppose a tank driver as well. The old school left and right. But he is in and of himself gorgeous. Uh, construction was very simple. Um, biggest problem I had was these tubing parts to go into the big earphone on the back because trying to work out how these unusual bends fit in it it wasn't immediately apparent you could work out where they went but not the orientation um so it took me two or three attempts before i worked out exactly what way round you had to set them to glue them in i also had glued these um horns on first if you're doing this at home you're probably better gluing these in then the horns and then these pieces on top uh, as it is, I'm going to have a little bit of filling to do, but that's my own bad luck uh, for doing it that way. Likewise, his tiny little legs. Um, there are armour plates, and the armour plates are keyed. So this one will only fit on this leg, and this one will only fit on this leg. Thus, you will not get them in the wrong order or orientation. But it does allow me to get in and paint I feel like painting the understructure in the steel and maybe using brass or copper for some of these plates on top to make it a bit different as saves me having to fight to get around them. There's also these little, uh, I suppose, ankle guards or what have you that sort of fit there. And again, they've been left off for the same reason um, as have these massive shoulder plates. Uh, these are the same. So it doesn't matter which way round you go on which arm. But otherwise, the build was incredibly straightforward. It was very easy to see where the parts were going to go. Um, if not immediately, then soon after. But at least you knew where the parts were meant to go. Uh, so it just required some orientation in space. The fingers almost caught me out, which is why he's only got one arm on, because the other arm would be on. But I wanted to show you this, because I hadn't realised it when I, I first... Um, took the pieces out and disassembled it. There are six fingers. They look like they could go in any of the six places. However, those little dots both number and orientate the finger in question. So there's number two, which means it can only go in there. Likewise, I have number three, can only go in there. And of course, the final one is number one. For the other hand, they are numbered uh, four, five, and six. So you, while you could put them into any of them, um, that is the specific way they're supposed to go together. And then if I pop the arm on, we would actually have fist sort of dragging behind and one out front pointing to his next target, um, which is just delightful but not the most delightful piece of this um, elaborate construction. I'd pop that in there. You can get an idea of the sort of scale of this. Uh, it is built for 28mm. It is a whopping 92, maybe 93mm from base to top. And there are these two cute little, I suppose, bomb bots 
rockets on them, big grinning faces and tiny goggles, and they sit just on the base in front of it. So one there, and another one slightly different, more happy and running forward. It just reminds me of some mad Tinkertown thing or something that you would find in Numerigan. It's almost like a Warcraft miniature on the tabletop. Um, so yeah, absolutely gorgeous. I'm really happy I've got this and indeed the range. I'm not entirely certain what I'm going to be doing with them. Um, I got it on a whim, uh, but there is rumours that the guys at MV Creative may be working on a game to use them in. So there we have it, the Megazork from MV Creative. All right, I couldn't go away without showing it completely built. So he's not completely built yet. His arms are still not glued on so I can get him out and paint him. But I so thought I'd show this. We have our little bomb buddies there. Pop those off and then we have this beast of a thing. All I've done is prime it. So it's just been black primed and then got a metallic on it. Uh, let's see if I can get these out because that's still not, there we are, still not glued in. But you can see all the cogs, gear wheels, that sort of thing have come up a treat. Just pops back in there. And then over the front will be its grill plate once I'm finished with it. They're going to end up being more brass, I think, than steel. But now it's all assembled and primed. You can really see the detail in there. Big, uh, big flat panels, but where they have detail, you know, it, it works for what they've put together. So they've not over stressed it or de-stressed it. If you want to weather it back, you can do that. If you just want to keep it as is, a big stompy goblin robot, then you can do that. Pop him back in there and you can see exactly the sort of terrifying sight your opponent will see stomping towards them across the battlefield. So there we have it, MV Creative's Megazork assembled. So there we have it, Goblin Tinker Power from the Megazork uh, from MV Creatives. A stunning kit, really nice, uh, magnificent scale. Um, fans of Warcraft will probably love this. Uh, they do have a, a very Warcraft flavour to a lot of the things they do. No game for it at the moment. So it's just one of these things that you might want to pick up to paint or pick up to add into another game. Uh, for example, Saga Age of Magic. You could drop it in there and do the sort of Lords of the Underearth. But let me know what you think of it below and whether or not you'll stick it into some of your games. Until next time, folks, I'm going to move on. Bye-bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.